just realized it doesn't give me a link for what I want to do straight away. We'll be there in a second, people. Pop out the chat. Where'd the chat go? Paul's lost the chat. Aha, uh -huh, found it. Alright, I think we're alive. Oh, man, that really does have a tungsten tone to it. Let's see if we can change that hue. Hey, Barry, Paul, Sutter. Scobit, music cat. Yeah, the, I've noticed that. We have to let's see if we can change the hue a little bit. Yeah, let's see something a little. That's a little ridiculous. It's distinctly ridiculous. Hmm. I'm not sure why it's decide to go into that sort of colour. Oh well, we'll have to live with it. Cram up the brightness a little bit. You, then you just start washing out everything though. No. Oh. Anyway. Alright, let's see what have I got. I'm trying to think I'll deal with the eye pain later. I've got to see if I've got a viable USB connector for this particular device. Now, <clears throat> now, one trick that seems to come up with a lot of these units is that you see a nice USB connector and you take it's broken, you take it off and you think, oh, I'll have a replacement of that. So you uh, walk over to the other side of your workshop, you go and you grab yourself your AliExpress a hundred different connectors type container and you go through you find one that looks just right you install it plug the power in and it goes and the reason being is that these ones often are orientated physically one way they have a top mount but a lot of these are bottom mount so the pin arrangement is actually the opposite of what you connect up to when you put the wrong connector on so I'll show you what I mean. You see the broad portion of the connector is down on the PCB. Whereas most of the sort of common ones you find it's the other way around and the narrow section of the connector is on the PCB. Hopefully I've got something that's going to be close enough to that. Because I've been looking around and haven't had the best of success. It's not too common. Uh, what the heck, they sent me vertical ones. That's no good. Vertical ones aren't going to help. Let's see what I've got here. There's only so much you can glean from the specs that they provide. Okay, that's probably not going to be much chop either. Trying to get an orientation relative. It could work at a pinch, but it's... The distance, it, it doesn't quite have as much shielding extended out the front. So that could work in a pinch. So candidate A. And of course you buy a dozen each of these things and then you'll probably never ever use them again. Okay, the vertical ones. I should have had some more. Should have had at least one more. Where is it? Ah. There we go. Mm 
This looks like it could be a bit better. Because I don't take the old connector off the board until I am actually ready to replace it. A20W. Now the gold wings are kind of, yeah, they're not going to go into the holes, but we might be able to get away with it. Those contacts are running a little short. Tough call, to be honest. Maybe the other one is a better option. All right, we'll take it off and have a look. I do have the supposed originals on order, but I don't know when they're ever going to get here because they're coming in from China. So I just went over to I just went over to the local well, Australian supplier of various things. Started looking for bottom mount USB connectors, and well, they only had about three or four. Hey, Sonia. All right, see if we can get this out without. So we've got these buttons here. We don't want to upset them. We've got a FPC connector there, latch. We don't want to upset that. So I might quickly solder some lead it onto them. Just to pickle them. Now, obviously, I don't have donors or spares or anything for this, so if I botch it up, I botch it up, which is not going to be good. Okay. I don't think it's going to require too much heat to get this off. Hope. Hey, Margarita. Yeah, I've got the uh, bugs flying around all over the place still. It is certainly annoying. I think 390 and 40 should do the trick. When you get used to working on MacBook boards and they've <coughs> got a lot of thermal conductivity, I'm rather reluctant to come up and then you jump to these boards and it's quite a bit less troublesome in most cases. Okay, we've just got to get the heat soaked through to the other side. Uh, we're coming up, we're coming up, come on, come on, you're almost there. There we go. Season finale of Star Trek Discovery? How come you're getting that one day early? We've got to wait till tomorrow. You know people, that's how. Huh. Or maybe you can just travel into the future. a little bit wasteful with the wick. I think it's, when it comes to a lot of things in life, I hate being a um, consuming type person in the sense of like, I'm going to waste here this one and a half centimeter piece of wick because I'm going to use it and that's the end of it. And that actually annoys me. So I n would normally prefer to use say a solder gun, but it just doesn't, well, we're knocking those inductors off. 
I mean, for the longest time I could barely use paper towels because to me it was akin to destroying the trees so I'd always be using uh, you know rewashable rags and things like that okay. actually I'm not sure why I'm bothering with this because the connector that we've got doesn't have Oh, actually, where it does have that one. Of all of them, it's got these side ones. Great. <laughs> Did everything else but what I needed. There we go. Let's pop through. There we go. Hey, Max. Basil. And we will just clear off that the last little couple of domes of solder that are sitting on the actual contacts. Naturally, because it's a ground plane one, where it's meant to be. I mean, I've, I do use paper towels and all that sort of thing now, but like I said, it was always a bit of a concern, and I think when we started to rely on pre grown. Uh, when we started having proper wood pulp forests made and things like that, then I was more content to use these resources. Yeah, I'm not feeling it with that one. I'm going to try the other one. Don't know what you're talking about, Pro. Mine's a wreck too. Probably must be watching a different channel. I prefer this one because it's got the, you know, the tabs go into the holes. So yeah, I think we'll go with this. Something is inhibiting it though. Maybe I have to get the rest of that out of there. The yeah, paper towels are now made with recycled material, but back when I had an aversion to using them, they were not. It was usually just whatever forest they could cut down for the day. But that's what I'm saying, is now that we have responsible forest management, I don't mind using wood-based or tree-based resources. In fact, I now prefer to use those resources because they are more responsibly managed. Chavis, I'm very sorry to hear that. Is that um, what's happened? Well, get to the vet. We can always catch up with you later. Yep, we can do this. That's a that's a nice fit. That one, I like that. Joshua Bell, I never have any luck soldering in new USB plugs, always end up melting them. But the minis or the micros or what? Hmm. Tack that in. Damn it. Oh, what was going to happen there was the solder would just run up the side of that connector rather than down into the hole, so we'll come back to that later. We'll use some hot air to assist it. Now to make this job a little bit easier, I'm going to prop the back of the board up. Is that a little too aggressive maybe? Yeah. And it just lets me get that angle that I need to get the micro tip in there. Okay. 
Yeah, we're just going to tack some solder onto them. It's a really dodgy job here, but we're going to use the hot air assist to make it actually work. This is sort of what you expect to see with people who give it their first shot, and that's understandable. Now the hot air assist, all I'm doing is I'm just putting 250 centigrade of air in here. It's not enough to seemingly do much, but with it, it'll, yeah, you're going to make a liar of me, aren't you? Yep, it is. I've lost all my flux. <laughs> Great, talking big. And losing even bigger. That's better. Travis, keep us up to date on your fair kid, please. When when you get the chance, not right now, obviously. Again, just 250, and it just stops the big metal parts from sucking all the heat away. But that should pop as it goes through. There we go. And do the other side. I don't know if that one went through. Well, yeah, they've gone through. You can see them. There and there. Okay, hopefully that works. Now we've got to get rid of all that flux. Can't exactly throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner, unfortunately. So we'll stick it on some paper towel, zoom out, get some toothbrush action going. By the way, the iPhone 6 that we worked on last night with the TriStar, fortunately the person did go ahead and approve that repair. So now that it's approved, I can actually go ahead and do it, even though I've, actually, even though I've done it. So the gamble paid off for once. This is another reason we didn't want a lot of hot air. These LEDs are somewhat sensitive to large amounts of hot air. They'll tend to burn and dim. They'll work, but they'll have a significantly lower output. Not sure where Jim is. He was there today with um, Tim's live stream. Yeah, this is going to be tricky to clear out. Okay, how am I going to do this? Get my knife blade, slice it in half.
Uh, I think I'm going to have to use a brush. It'd be nice to have some sort of microscopic toothbrush. Use the Reaper. No, it's actually not a bad idea. I could have done that. Maybe the Reaper with a piece of paper towel on it to soften its blow. Art paintbrush. Not sure it would have the... I know the ultra-fine ones you're talking about, the sort of things you might use on a ceramic, if you're doing painting of ceramics and things like that. Not sure they'd have the strength to hold, but... I guess I'll try a few. I'll go down to the local art shop and have a look. Okay. That killed my scream. Crazy. <laughs> no, it's back now. Now, this is the fun part of these projects where you've taken, you know, several days, weeks, whatever, to get back around to reassembling these things. Oh, that's right, this is a test uh, replacement back. you got to remember how on earth it all went together. Do I use a silicon base mat? Yeah, this is um, a silicon cooking mat. Legitimately is a cooking mat. I'm not... Uh, I haven't bothered with... Yeah, I know you can get the like so-called proper electronics ones, the phone repair and things like that, but I really haven't had a need to get anything like that. And I find half the time they tend to bobble up anyway. Okay, that can be attached at a later time. The crucial thing here seems to be this annoying little so-and-so. It's, it's unusual. There's a lot of things here that you seem to have to unnaturally fold away and slip under. As I've commented in a few other times, you do wonder who reviews the build or the assembly procedures in these and whether they get a chance to report back and say, you know what guys, that's taken an extra six hours to do for each machine, all because your engineers were too lazy to make it a fractionally bit easier for the people on the assembly plant. I don't have power connected in it, so I can get away with using metal tweezers for the moment. So 
these are the screen and touch, I dare say. Hello? You, you want to go in the ultrasonic cool off tank, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, the iPhone 6 is coming in a bit later. Uh, okay, so that's a latch. It's a plastic latch that. Go. There's a tiny speaker connector. Who the hell crimps these anyway? So, what crazy kind of machine have they invented that can crimp those? I think this is, uh, come on Paul, we'll do it properly, okay. I was going to say, I can probably get away with plugging in the power, but these Wi-Fi connectors should be set to home. They can float around and cause a nice little short. Okay, now we need micro USB and hopefully we don't get any bang type noises not showing any power being drawn nothing Hmm. All right, it's got me stumped. Got no power at all being drawn on that. Let's see if I got another cable just in case. Not a nix. Oh wait, here we go. All of a sudden we've got one amp going. Okay, maybe it was one of those ones where they wait five or six seconds to see if there's stability and then start charging up. Because now we are 1.4 amp. Point five, point six. Here we go. We got life. It's, it's life, Jim, as we know it. That was interesting. It must be just that the detection current it uses is under one milliamp, so it could be in the order of microamps, and in which case the USB meter doesn't detect it. So, uh, so that's it. That. That's good, that's working. Thank goodness for that. Had me panicking there for a second. I gotta admit, I was pretty confused though if it wasn't charging. And what doesn't help is that it's pretty much at full charge anyway.
I'll just yank it out and see what happens. Yeah, disconnected and it's still perfectly fine. Okay, doke. We'll turn that off, and then we'll get on with the iPhone. So slide to shut down your PC. It's not a PC. So they want a new back on this one. Okay, so we've got the buttons. Some sort of speaker mesh. Let's try to see... Okay, so there... there. So a speaker mesh here. Okay, speaker mesh. Okay, these little bits I don't need because they are included on the chassis. But I do have to screw in a few other things. I figured I may as well finish this otherwise it's going to you know, be two or three days later and I'll go, whoops, I forgot to do that job. Looks like I have got the screws lined up properly here that you cannot see. Why? I would love to know why I have this um, tungsten tone going on here. I guess it's just something that I've got to work out over time. I'm thankful for the fact that it has now dramatically improved the quality at least of everything. Oh, and I reached a milestone in my life today. Today was the day that I go in, went into the chemist and finally was brave enough uh, to just go straight up to him and say, yeah, I, I need to protect myself here, so can I please have a um, blood pressure meter, please? So I had to buy my first blood pressure meter. I had to go to the doctors for some other things, well, one other thing, and they gave me the usual lecture about my blood pressure. I said, maybe you should monitor it a little better. It doesn't actually sit... Uh, maybe it will once it's all clipped in. Okay, yeah, that's better. Uh, there's a little bit of lift here. It's not bad. Now yeah, that's why. It still lifts a little bit. I don't think I can do anything about that. At least the charge port lines up nicely. Let's verify that it actually works. So yeah, it's sitting here and showing no current, but I'm going to give it a little bit of time to see if it comes good.
is it going to be like some sort of horrible tri-star thing where it needs to have power in the battery in order to be able to turn it on so you can actually commence the charging cycle that will be a bit terrifying okay, this still is not charging Oh, I think I know why. Because, like I said, it's got a full battery on it. So, take that out. Let it run down for a bit. Assuming it powers back up. Did I break it? Oh, there it goes. It doesn't have a, what do you call it, it doesn't have a haptic feedback or anything like that. Like you normally used to, you know, when you hold down the button and they'd normally buzz to let you know that they're going to get started. Maybe they figured it wasn't worth it. Uh, I've enabled Wi-Fi on this, so in about 15 minutes, if this being up and running, we'll see if the battery charge goes ahead. Okay. Now maybe we can get to the iPhone. At least that's nice to know that that connector can be used as a replacement for that Dell rather than having to get it bought in. Let's see, which connector was that? Oh, it was the one that I ripped the label off. Fantastic. Some sort of Moloch brand. Uh, what model Dell? I'll have to double check for you. Fantastic, I ripped out all the information that I needed. So I'll have a look at the job number and I'll tell you what model it is. Easy Pad Pro or something. Hmm, means nothing. Job 403. Hey Greg, welcome. Oh, and I put new skates on my mouse today. So you yeah, got white ones. I think I bought about four packets of 12 skates. So it's going to keep my mice going for a while. What did I say that job number was? 40 what? No. Actually, I could just look for Dell. It's got to be about the only Dell I've got. Dell Venue 8 Pro 5830. Pro Engineer, 
Yeah, I know the um, rubber, I know with the Microsoft mouse, that rubber, I know what you mean about it wearing out. I'm pretty happy with the, this is why I keep repairing these ones, even though they're only about 30 bucks or something. What I've also got coming is the middle button that always dies because I'm a Unix user and the middle button is the, uh, the same as paste. So instead of hitting control V or going right click and then paste, we can just hit the middle button and it pastes. I found that they have a high reliability or high use tactile button that I can use, so I'm ordering in a bunch of those. Let's see. I'm just having a look at what that part, that USB port was. Unfortunately, I can't show you what. So, so it was a Molex brand. Naturally, I've got two of those. Wait, no, one order code. Wow, Element 14's website is always so slow. Okay, let's go here. Okay, so this is it. Yeah, I bought 10 of them, they're only a dollar each, thank goodness. So it doesn't have the extra reinforcement at the back, but I think overall it should be pretty good. I guess we'll find out. Now see what, if I can find, oh yeah, here we go. Come on. Uh, so these are the high um, durability tactile switches that I'm going to use when the ones in this mouse button die. Now what I really need to find is the old one because I need to make sure that the height uh, the height's the same. And what's the guarantee that I have tossed out the last one? probably have. Pretty sure it was nine and a half mil for these. Oh, trash. Naturally of course I keep everything else but what I need or should have kept. Your lousy mongrel. Yep. Sure enough, I have indeed displaced that which I need to the bit bucket. Very unsmart. Well, I'll write the number down on this anyway. So yeah, these are, they don't actually say it here, but in the data sheet they do. Find projected out of flat type. Swear I'm not losing my mind. I swear I saw them um, listed. Oh, here we go, yeah. High reliability gold plated series. And yeah, so it's either going to be the 7 or the 9.5. So I don't know how it's going to go, but we'll give it a whirl. Okay. So yeah, these parts I'll probably never ever use again. 
But you can be guaranteed if you only buy one or maybe two of that part that you are looking for, it'll be the time that you really needed four or five of them. And then they'll run out of stock or they'll cease production. You know, be every, any which way in which your life can be uh, made more difficult, the universe will be happy to serve. Okay, I found time. Yeah, a new arc in the... Okay, the battery is complete crap to start with. And they used to be Farnell here, and then they changed to Element 14. Not really sure what induced the change, but not that it really matters. Engineer, well, in this case, it would definitely need to be replaced because it's ruptured, oh, it's got pimples on it. But certainly, when people bring in their well, anything like an iPhone 6, anything 6S and older, I do say to them there is a chance that the battery will need replacing, and then I get the hopefully authorization to do the replacement if it requires it. Damn it. Sometimes you do get the devices where the battery looks perfect, but it is actually quite old. I had one today, and it was a 2015 battery, and it legitimately looked pretty much brand new. But it certainly needed replacing. Stick, stick, stick. Don't do that. Not unless you're a wildly popular YouTube channel with a million plus viewers and stuff like that. And then you can get away with irresponsible behaviours. So what is this one? This is uh, 2014, so it's six years old, seven years old. Now, I can't exactly remember what's wrong with this one. I mean, I know it doesn't boot. We'll just have a quick look on the board, see if anything comes up. Looks like it's some sort of grime there. Connectors all look okay. Yeah, there is, yeah, this sort of, it's sort of like old life corrosion that's been in an environment where it's salty air, like on the coast or something like that. You see it a lot on MacBooks, things like 1278s and such, all the time. Uh, nothing here directly that I can blame. So we'll get our power adapter, plug it in, and see if anything complains. Hey, Bar on Ambo, Andrew Hughes. See, so DJ Craze. I need a new few parts for my Dell and Spiron, even though the machine was made in 2018 19. Dell doesn't have it. Sounds entirely normal. Hey, Miles. What am I doing? Jump to 250 straight away. Mm, 
that's doing a normal boot. I think. Mm. Yeah, let's plug a screen in and see. Maybe it's just a bad battery all along. Certainly a bad screen. Guess who probably doesn't have any batteries left? Almost well, certainly 6 plus is no good. 6S plus is no good. We want 6, 6G black. Please tell me I've got a 6 no, XR, XS. We do not have an excess of sixes. Seven, seven. Now, really, my iPhone six box is definitely empty of batteries. Most likely, it has. Yes, I was right. It has a battery container with no battery, which means I have a free running battery around here somewhere, and I think I know where it is. All right, I'm just going to go take a walk up to the other workshop, well, to the other room. And we'll come back hopefully with a battery in our hands. What about you? What are you? No, you're an old dodgy one. Alright, won't be long. I was met with a horde of wild animals at the doors. It stopped me getting through. <laughs> they were all like, let us in, we want to see what you're up to. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. We do not have a screen output here. Question is, is it running? Is the battery flat? This will plug it in. It sounds terrible, but I kind of hope that there's a fault that we can fix, as in something to entertain us. 1.2 amps, so it's definitely charging. see if we get a chain, if we get a buzz. Oh, we can't because we haven't got the Taptic thing installed. Crikey, of all the times. Uh, 
So I wonder if we've got a blooming backlight or something. We'll put the taptic back in. And that way, when we think it has booted up, we can just flick the mute switch back and forth. And that will let us know if it is alive. At least a very primitive way of knowing. It's kind of like having a debug LED on your circuits. Okay. I can't get the angle right to see if I have got a display output. Normally I do have iPhone 6 screens with the backs ripped off them. The, the uh, black plastic at the back so that you got a transparent window to work from. Like this. Uh, this is an iPhone 7 one. It just makes it easy rather than having to rebuild the backlight if you're doing data recovery. You can just use one of these, put a light source behind it and you can see your way through. Nothing. CPU is not really warm either. While well, that is doing that. Let's see if I can find myself a busted up iPhone 6. Let's see. You gonna be any good? Yeah, you might. Let's split it open. We're not getting any transparency, so it could be that, I think chestnut, I think it is, it could be faulty. I think, where's Jason Vollmer when I need him? But I'm pretty sure it's chestnut. You need chestnut to drive the voltages on the LCD so that it can actually let the light through. But in that case, I would expect actually backlight. Having no chestnut and no backlight, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'd expect one or the other, but certainly not both. Hmm. It seems perfectly happy charging. The other possibility is that the flex is not working. But you can test that indirectly. Take the battery out, plug this in and it should fire up that. It's drawing the right sort of current. It's like it's trying. It wants to. 
Come here, give me some light. Ah, oh yeah, nothing's driving chestnut. Okay, board's coming out. Is it in DFU mode? Uh, you make a good point. Yeah. All right. Let's check that. Thank you for reminding me about DFU. Although it was a little strange, though, when I had it on the where is it? The USB. This thing here. When we were running it on that, we were showing a normal boot sequence. Whereas normally if it's a DFU, it will just simply sit at about 70 maybe and then shut down. But I will check to see if it shows any sort of activity. I'll just plug it into the Linux machine of this workstation and see if it comes up saying Apple device. And if it is in DFU mode, it will do that pretty quickly. see what port am I willing to risk today let's see what we can make go bzzzt <sighs> should be doing this on a separate machine Paul It is. It doesn't look like it's showing up. Oh wait, no, here we go. Alright, so it is showing up. It's not in DFU mode. It is connected. So something's going on for the display output. Yeah. If it is in DFU mode, it comes up quite differently. It actually says DFU mode on the system. Well, Travis, if it was backlight, I should still get transparency through the um, display. Like when I peel off the back like this, when I hold it up to the light, I should be able to see through it, with, uh, through it. But because the LCD panel itself is not being driven properly, it's not letting any light through. So we've got some sort of compound issue here. Something common between the two. I'm not sure what yet. So saying before, it's normally one or the other. You normally have your backlight, but you don't have your uh, LCD drive. Well, you have your LCD drive, but you don't have your backlight. In this case, we're missing both. We've got some plenty of bugs there. Yeah, go for a swim. Just turn this around, do my normal orientation rather than mixing myself up. Like I said, we could be missing both. But then I am wondering what would be the commonality there. Especially that it is booting. Uh, Joshua, that's 
three screens we've tried and none of them work. One of them's new. The same behavior on all of them. Whoops. Come on, how'd you come? Do you think you get back by the screen is not detected? Um, that probably you're right, you wouldn't. Uh, I'm seeing some greenish stuff down here. So yeah, that's actually a good point you make. So we should look at what it is that is used to detect if the screen is present. I'm gonna wait for you guys to tell me because I don't know. Don't expect me to know things. Mison or nothing. Yeah, okay, that... There is some kind of liquid damage definitely has come through here, a little more than normal. So we'll peel this back, we'll take that off. There is solder on my blade. It's fantastic. When I stab someone with it, they'll die over time from the madness. Ugh. Gotta get rid of that solder. That's ridiculous. You know, if you wanted to get solder onto a blade like this, you wouldn't be able to. But somehow or another I ended up with solder on that blade. I really don't know why I cared to do that so much. I ruined it in the end anyway. Yeah. Nothing notable there. I'll try here because we've got oh, the corrosion coming in that area. Just have to drop the shield off, that's all. Well, I'll give it a visual inspection first before I bother doing any sort of diode readings. Mm. 
Not there, so we probably should take the CPU shield off too. About to say that's taken longer than I expect, and then it dropped. Knew I was about to yell at it. Okay, let's just put heat right next to the backlight. I see. I mean, my tweezers right next to the backlight. I see. Why not? It's got a bit of a funny smell to it. Oh, here comes the gaming. <laughs> I'm trying to... I can't really... think of what the smell is that I've got here. A porpoise hawk. Jaden, we don't know what we're looking at yet. All we know is it just doesn't work. So it depends on what is wrong. Yeah, I think that's some corrosion there. Yep, there we go. That's what's wrong. You can see here. There's a bit of corrosion there. That cap looks a bit dingy, but under here. Yeah, what chip's that? Is that chestnut or is that just one of the drivers? All right, uh, let's bring up the iPhone 6. Uh, U1501. Backlight driver, Mesa Boost, chestnut. Right. And uh, which one are you specifically? Your chestnut. Okay. So, my guess was right. Still, it seems to me maybe what's happening is because Chestnut might have been, been told to turn on, but it was not getting any output, then the system just said, stop it. Ooh, shut it down. Have all the... My lucky day, hey? And the nice thing is... This one's not underfilled. Mind you, you've got to be pretty careful around here. Because <laughs> everything else is underfilled. Yeah. Trying to think whether I should drop down to the 6mm nozzle like a professional iPhone repairer or not. Or whether I should go at it my traditional style and using my 9mm nozzle. I think we'll go six. Time to get serious. Well, yeah, I mean, you can use a board heater if you want. But this will not be the first time that I've done this particular job. Not to say that you sh shouldn't use a board heater, in fact, I'd probably recommend that you do. <laughs> Just looking around to see what I should clear out in terms of overfill, whether I can get away with this. Hey Luke Davis, how's it going? Add to the fact that I actually don't have a board heater for this particular model. I've got board heaters for the iPhone X, iPhone 10 series, whatever your preference is towards their naming. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to sit at about 370, 60 here. We're just going to, essentially we're going to end up heating the board ourselves a bit, just get some sort of warmth through it. And then we're going to drop the air right down. I 
It's like I'm running at 60 litres per minute. I'm going to drop it down to about 30, even though it's probably going to be a bit much. Okay, we're starting to get fizzing going on down there, so we, we are warming up. Drop that air down. And say a little prayer and hold the board up. Something just flew in front of the... Ah, it smells like toffee, oh. which means this is a sugary drink that got it. Okay. Uh, so that's good, we didn't displace any of these. We'll check the... Damn, this is just drifting all over the place. It's like Tokyo Drift out. We'll check the continuity of those. Now I'm not sure whether it was alcohol or whether it was soft drink. Okay, we must not have communications here. That's better. Still got some things I need to work out on my software. Okay. Okay, it's open. Open. Okay, that's fine. Alright, they seem to be okay. I don't think the pads are, it's just the angle of the light that makes it look like that. The pads are there. I feel like I'm pretending to be Jason Vollmer at the moment. With none of the skill.
The corrosion junk is still up here. Uh, they're probably flat enough for me to put a replacement down, but because of the area that it's in and because of our sensitivity towards heat, I'm going to re-ball a chestnut with leaded solder and then put it down. Hey Ron Rogers, welcome. La da 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 da. Let's see, let's find a perfectly good chestnut, rip its balls off and put some new ones on. Certainly I hope I have some, pretty sure I do, some chestnuts that is. U1501, U1502, that's so not useful. And there we go, chestnut. So we were blessed, we actually had them on hand. I mean, worst case scenario, I would have just gone and taken one from an old iPhone 6 or any of the iPhones that have one, which is quite a few, I think. Now we, we have snow here in Christmas, tropical snow, also known as rain. Well, uh, there's some mighty fine pretty ones there. They almost look like they could be leaded, but I'm not taking that chance. the chip before I touch it. Fluffy hair, yeah, that's the reason why I have fluffy hair at the moment is because I was mowing the yard this afternoon and I obviously washed my hair after every, well each day I wash my hair anyway and of course it just naturally happens to balloon out like that. Okay, now we need a stencil and then we'll get some solder paste should be fun. I'm actually not sure if my 3D stencils will do a chestnut. If they don't then I have plenty of other stencils that will. Hey any triple five, welcome. The most reliable clocking in person. I think that's just not the What have I got the five by four? Five by four. And we've got a little speck of trash in there. Seriously a little speck of trash and the only stencil I wanted.
and sold a post out. Ah, come on. Mongols, you just blew out all your balls. That little tiny, that tiny, tiny ball you can see has to go back to its parent right there. Unfortunately, the great big claw has now decided to, it wants it. Ah, fine, we'll, we'll just steal a couple of specks from somewhere else. And what was a tiny ball will now undersized ball now becoming an oversized ball. Spot of flux. Give it another reheat. Make sure they're all central. If you're wondering why I can't get the focus down, that's because the microscope it literally has bottomed out at this point. Like I can't go any lower on the microscope without actually making the dropping the whole head assembly. That there is fractionally small. Question is, yeah, that's that's probably a little too small. Damn it! <sighs> what do I do? What do I do? Let's take ten times longer and do it the way we shouldn't. On this, max magnification will be 32 by. No, you just F that up, Paul. Now there's just going to be a swarm of balls in places that they're not supposed to be. Yeah, let's try it. Though, because I've got the point seven, uh, because I've got the point seven uh, Barlow on it, the forty-five magnification that you normally would get is reduced down to a thirty-two and a bit. Okay, the next trick of the day is which one is pin one? And looks like in this case, pin one is you know, top right sort of thing. Pardon me. I am not worried about those tiny little specks of paste that is still on the underside of this chestnut chip. They're not going to cause shorts. Just need to get a little bit of flux down, not a lot. Damn it, that's a lot. Ooh, 
Yeah, JCT, that's right. It depends. Like Some of the Barlows say they're 0.75, some say they're 0.7. Personally, I don't think any of them really know. This, my friends, is why we normally like to wick flat those pads, but it's in a position that I really don't want to do that. Uh, let's see, we've got 20 air, that might be enough to do what we need to do. Where do you get your flux? I actually buy mine directly from Amtech. Don't you dare bobble off those. Oof. Hopefully that went all right. As long as you don't see any balls squeezing out, like in these regions here, and the other thing you got to watch out for is make sure these don't start floating. And they seem to be okay. The most common thing is these start floating off the pads after you've done rework here. Okay, hopefully we have some uh, activity. Actually, I need that fan on a bit longer. Do not let go of the board. There's no protection grill or anything, it's just... It will go straight into the impellers. Crazy Joe, we don't have any MacBooks tonight. Just iPhones and Dell tablets. We'll just leave this floating around for the moment. And just hope that we don't do anything stupid. Well, stupider than usual. There could be other faults, I mean, that is one thing we didn't bother to check to see if there was any other possible faults. But I guess we'll try to take one step at a time. Okay, first thing we can try is just simply plug the charge lead in and see if it does the attempted start loop with 70 milliamps. Still nothing. Well, it's definitely doing the loop. Alright. So we've got more complications ahead. Mm. 
we'll plug in the transparent one and see if we get a logo. Maybe you know we've still got backlight faults. Oh, we got a backlight. Well, oh, we are booting. Maybe I just didn't push it down enough. Waiting to see if it boots. Come on. Boot, 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 boot. Yep, we got a boot. Yep. Oh, crikey. Here comes a million messages. Backlight in all its glory. Still, I don't know why it didn't do what I would consider normal behavior when you just plug the power in. Actually, I should just verify that. Because maybe we do still have other problems. So typically, when you plug power in, even if you've got no battery, it should try to boot the phone, yeah, it'll just comp not do anything. I'll yeah, see, look at that. It's drawing the right amount of current. Actually, no, it's a little low. But it's not firing it up. So, I don't know. Is that something I'm missing here? Maybe there's something wrong with the flex. Stamping your oh, pancreatitis. Oh no. Hopefully, it's just um, you know temporary and it can be managed. It's not a pleasant condition. I guess the question is, why has it happened? No, I guess you don't really know yet. Thinks it caught it early enough. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, believe me, I completely understand what it feels like. It's like when we found out that Micro had diabetes. So like, what the heck? Of course, you know, it's entirely treatable for Micro. I'd say this definitely needs to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. The only trouble is, you know, what happens to these things? They get destroyed in the ultrasonic cleaner. They would do. Um, and what's this? No. That's not flux, or at least it's not my flux. I suppose I should taste it and find out. Let's find out if it's water soluble. See if it has a UV trace, a good point. Uh, I'll get my UV torch. Not that all fluxes have UV traces in them, but uh, then again, mine does, so good point. Yeah. But this is everywhere. This is not mine. This is something else entirely. Because it's everywhere. Okay. 
there's no way my flux went all over here and here and here and here. Oh no. It may not even be flux, it'll just be something else. But uh, yeah. Alright, I guess I'm definitely going in the ultrasonic. But like I said, I mean, I'm not too sure about how yeah, these MEMS sensors go in the ultrasonics. Not, can't be great for them. But at the same time, we can't leave the board in this condition either. So it's almost like maybe it was worked on before and they c couldn't get to the fault or something. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't look like there's actually rework anywhere. So maybe whatever it is is not actually flux, but yeah. Maybe the alcohol or the drink or whatever is actually UV active. I'll take those off. Make sure we remember to put the damn things back on. A number of times that I have taken these off and forgotten to put them back on is a few too many. Alright, well in that case that pretty much concludes what we can do for now. It works, so that's the main thing. If nothing else, we may just actually state this one as a data recovery. Um, like I said, it's, I would expect the... I would have expected to be doing the proper behavior when you plug it in with no battery and it should still illuminate so yeah either we got a bad flex or a bad tristar mm. <coughs> pardon me is that they didn't tell you having cracked open before they no nah, they haven't made any indication of its treatment prior yeah it could have been a rebuild phone originally. You know, just one of those ones that they made out of scraps. So this may end up just being a data recovery phone, but... Oh, I was trying to think. It's getting a bit late, actually. Yeah, it's half past 12. I was going to say I could try and see if I can get it to communicate. Oh, wait, we already know it does. We already know it does because when we plugged into Linux, it comes up and it reports itself properly. So, I just have a feeling that this one may carry multiple other issues with it. So it's fine, we've got it up and running in terms of display. So now we can get the data off it, but it may be in this case a more prudent um, option to just simply go with the data recovery. Just tell to the person, t say to the person that due to the fact that it has had liquid damage, we really would rather not actually reassemble it back to being a normal day-to-day -day phone. Whereas the other one that they had, which was the one last night, which had the TriStar, that one's perfectly fine to go. But I think this one, we'll just do data recovery. And that way, yeah, it's a little bit cheaper for them and it stops me getting a call in three months' time when the phone dies again and they want a refund. So, yeah, I think... Will win. Oh look, it's Gamer Arch who thinks I'm a noob. Okay, that was rude and that was immature of me, I gotta admit, and not something I would normally do. I apologize. Um, uh, late night. I, um, I'm actually kind of half ashamed of that. I'm sorry. It's not my behavior. I can be better. But I suppose that's what they wanted from me. Look, it's a noob. Give, let's even give him the flip. Suck it into that. Oh well. Alright, well, I am out of here and I am going to go do some programming, some eating, and maybe watch some Netflix. I'm not sure which. Eh, it didn't really feel that great to do it, to be honest. It was more of a like, this is what I should do, but yeah. If I want to let the steam out, I have my other ways. Yeah, usually, yeah. Ways that perhaps aren't what I should talk about. Too much bug soup, yeah, fair enough. 
there. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching. Well, we did at least have two successes, even if one was a partial success. But, um, yeah, we had some wins. So I'll see you next time, be it tomorrow, be it whenever. Don't know. Until then, catch you later.